How's it going, guys? It's Harvey from Mars from Dive Thousand. Today is December 13th, 2020, and today we're primarily going to focus on the major nor'easter that's expected to happen this week in the United States and, and more specifically the Northeast. But before I begin, make sure to subscribe if you like these weather videos, and make sure to like if you like this video, and make sure to turn on post notifications if you're into weather related content. So let's begin by first taking a look at the GFS model, and as you can see. The GFS model over the past several runs has not really changed that much in its forecast, which which sort of means that it's becoming more likely that we're going to see a major nor'easter impacting the United States as it's becoming less and less likely that we won't see a powerful storm or at least a powerful snowstorm somewhere in the northeast because over the past several runs, uh, the computer model has just been so so um, confident with taking this along the coast and bringing a lot of snow along the coast and it just seems unlikely that suddenly after all after all this time it's gonna suddenly just move out to sea or not impact anyone or bring minor impacts so it seem it's becoming more and more likely especially as we get closer to the day of the snowstorm that we're gonna see a potentially major snowstorm in the northeast and i would say it's becoming more and more unlikely that we're going to see this storm being minor impacts or just stay out to sea like some other northeasters do so i do expect there's going to be some type of major snowstorm in the northeast where, who exactly will that that impact and how and how powerful that will be remains to be the question however i could say with confidence that we're likely going to see a powerful nor'easter that could bring major snowstorm impacts somewhere along the northeast. We just have to determine where and when that will happen and who will get impacted the most. So as you can see, taking a look at the GFS model, what will be the anatomy of this storm will be will originate from from this mid latitude cyclone that's circulating around the north pacific at this point and it'll move further west with this ridge of high pressure and the jet stream dip bringing it towards the east i meant to say not west and over the next several days it'll bring snow to the cascade mountains and all throughout the rocky mountain ranges and then it continues to move south and what's interesting is that not only does the low pressure system itself move south but behind it it's packing a lot of cold air behind it as it likely as the, the temperature is likely lowered as it passed through the Cascades and the Alberta mountains because as a as a warm humid moist air rises um we are forced to rise because of these mountains it eventually sinks down and cools and as a result we see a lot more cooler air behind a lot of these storms that come from the Pacific Northwest, especially the ones that come from Canada, where obviously more of the Arctic air is stored. So it's expected to bring some of that Arctic air further south, and that's a key ingredient for a lot of these snowstorms during the winter. And that's a very key ingredient for a lot of these snowstorms to really develop and really rapidly intensify. So because it really brings that instability further south and that creates convection, and overall just creates uh, an endless cycle of development for low pressure systems. So as you can see, it brings just enough cold air to the south to where we're gonna see more instability. We're gonna see some snow potentially in the Midwest, not a lot, but maybe some because the temperatures are gonna be cold enough. And we're gonna see some rain and potentially some thunderstorms forming as a result of these instability. So watch, at, um, so watch out for the potential of severe thunderstorms because of this low pressure system moving further south because of the because of the cold air behind it forcing a lot of that warm humid gulf air up and condensing rapidly to a point where it'll be considered a thunderstorm so and as we continue to move forward that cold air is still behind it and this low pressure will interact with this canadian high that's also bringing very cool temperatures due to the northeast during this time frame and that'll enhance the instability even more because not only you're getting cold air from the behind this storm just to the west of it you're also getting an abundance of cold air just to the north of this storm and that'll in enhance the convection on the northern portion of this storm and force a lot of that warm humid air that's currently 
mainly in the lower levels of the atmosphere where the low pressure is up to the higher levels of a point where there's going to be far more precipitation and then it rapidly intensifies especially once the low pressure goes out to the ocean where it's going to circulate the cold air that's behind it over the gulf the warm gulf stream water which will create much more convection and thunderstorm activity just off the coast and that will transition into snow as the rain wraps around into this cold air parcel and the middle and you see that there is just heavy snow extending from long island all the way to the washington dc area where you see just the dark blues and to be honest it's very rare for me to see um the gfs lean towards bringing such heavy snow within one area um as i only typically see this heavy snow and very powerful snowstorm so it seems likely that um if this lo low pressure system moves up the east coast it's going to be very powerful enough to where we could be talking about feet of snow and not inches as it's becoming more likely because both the european and the gfs model have been leaning towards that favorable forecast and been definitely um and it's been definitely like leaning towards just bringing major a major snowstorm to the northeast over the next several days and you see by late wednesday to thursday it um new jersey pennsylvania is just getting pounded by snow and then thursday morning it continues through new jersey and then extends to southern new england while northern new england will miss out on most of the snow um southern new england such as boston could still be in the mix and um, keep in mind we're still like four days out so there could be a lot of variations within the track forecast over the next several days and then i would say by thursday afternoon the storm should be gone as it'll be a relatively fast mover so it won't which is good news because if it was slower then we could be talking about three to four feet or so but since this storm is powerful although it's quick moving we could still see one to two feet of snow in some areas if the gfs model was correct and it's seeming more and more likely that we will see one to two feet somewhere it's uncertain where exactly that still remains to be seen over the next several days but it's definitely something to keep in mind so you might be asking what will determine the track forecast of this storm and who will get impacted the most well it really all depends on how these um, ridges position itself and how power and really how um how powerful or big these ridges are because um this because i noticed the steering flow for this storm let me show you guys the north atlantic height anomaly because it gives a good idea of where the higher pressure is and where the lower pressures are so let me get the height anomaly map for um for the future 500 millibar height anomaly at the mid levels of the atmosphere so this is so this, this as of the low pressure is currently at this point and you see there's this big ridge over the atlantic and um there's that canadian ridge i was talking about that will sort of bring the cold air from the north and really enhance the storm's instability so you see the main pretty much the main steering currents of this storm are the main steering current of this storm is this ridge right here which is bringing a norther a southerly wind component to the jet stream that's sort of bringing a dip in the jet stream as well and also and also this ridge that's just to the north of it because if this ridge is just far south enough then it's more likely that the impacts will be more towards i would say the mid-atlantic states and um then it'll be more of like a new jersey threat less and less of a new england threat however if it's more northerly then we could see more snow in the interior northeast and then maybe the coastal areas of the of the northeast might miss out on majority of the snow and also we have to keep in mind that this ridge and um that's in the middle of the atlantic because if it's weaker and it doesn't move as far north then we're more likely to see the jet stream straighten out to the point where this storm won't really move very far north and the dip in the jet stream won't be far down enough to bring that cold air to interact with that warm air to create a strong instability to really enhance the storm strength and as a result the storm will be weaker and um 
and we'll have more of a likely chance to move offshore. However, if that ridge is stronger, um, that that means we're going to see more of a sort of a, um, I'm trying to think of a right word, sort sort of a bump in the jet stream right here, and that'll force the a more of a dip in this area, which will bring the storm closer to the coast and bring it a lot more stronger, and we'll see a lot more cold air on the back side of it. And that'll be the worst case scenario where we could see feet of snow. So we still have to wait and see how th these ridges build up because they'll be important in determining the track of this um, storm over the next several days. So how about, so let's take a scenario if the GFS model were correct, were pretty much 100% correct. So let's take a look at the total snowfall accumulation that the GFS model projects with this storm currently and I want to keep in mind that some people might take these maps the wrong way as um, they assume that um, they assume that the numbers the accumulation numbers you see throughout the northeast the northeast um, could be taken as face value however for one thing is that there's still a lot of uncertainty we're still four days out from this four or five days out so a lot could change and a lot could shift and not only that it's that this map this map isn't really supposed to be taken as face value because the gfs is assuming a lot of things with this snowfall forecast it's assuming that one inch of rain equates to 10 inches of snow which is sort of the average for snowstorms and it's a good assumption but you definitely don't want to make hard um, cold hard predictions with it because um, every snowstorm is different and the temperature variations of snowstorms are different. So there are some times where only um, one inch of rain equates to only five inches of snow because of how um, powdery the snow is or how much um, colder the snow is. So um, so do not take this as face value. And, um, um, and also the GFS model forecast doesn't equate doesn't regard the ground temperature as well. It doesn't regard how warm the ground temperature is. So it's just measuring the snow that's coming out of the sky and not the snow that's accumulating. So, so as a result, it's likely that these snow totals are lower here, but even then, um, we're, the GFS is expecting upwards of nearly two feet of snow. Let me zoom into the Northeast region so you guys get to see a little bit more um to get you guys get to see a little bit more of the accumulation forecast if the gfs if the snowstorm equates one inch of rain to 10 inches of snow which is a big which is a big assumption but you see that the gfs in this scenario is taking a pretty large area of 12 to 18 inches of snow out again take these a little bit lower take these numbers with a grain of salt especially since we're only four to five days out it could easily change how so i would expect these to be a little bit lower but mo for most of the but mostly i see a foot pretty much extending from new york city all the way down to virginia where you could see upwards of a foot or more of snow over the next several days and oh, oh um during this snowstorm and we and um we definitely need to watch because this could be something potentially major and the european model agrees with this for the most part. I don't think there's a map which determines the snowfall for the European. Let me see if it does. Okay, it doesn't, but the European is is in pretty big agreement that we will also see a pretty strong storm along the coast because you see that it's at 1,003 millibars, but, it's still, but just because it's not as strong as GFS does not mean it's going to pack a lot of precipitation with it because it certainly will... Um, even if the storm isn't the strongest in the world that you've ever seen since. Um, so um, so I, it's making me think that it's more likely we're going to see a major snowstorm in the northeast. Where and when exactly that has yet to be determined. We have to see how the, the position of the ridges build um, are over the next several days to determine that. But we'll, I'll make sure to keep you guys updated. So in terms of my forecast for this snowstorm, so I made a little bit of a, a pre preliminary map of this snowstorm 
um, yeah, my expectations of the snowstorm as of right now is definitely are subject to change because the forecast models could change drastically over the next four days. But this is my current forecast where I could think worst case scenario, we could see up to two feet in some areas in the northeast. And I would say just north of the I-95 corridor, maybe Philadelphia is in the mix in this scenario, maybe Washington, D.C., New York City, um, Hartford, Connecticut, and even just south of Boston, you could, I could see you guys getting over a foot or more of snow um, based off the current forecast where, um, um, based off the current forecast models we're seeing. So, um, and just west of that, you could still see 6 to 12, which is still a pretty significant snowstorm for you guys. So just because you're getting less than a foot, the foot does not mean you will miss out on a lot of impacts. And then 3 to 6 inches just to the west of that, 1 to 3 even west of that, and then 1 inch, around 1 inch throughout the more the Midwest states. So it, this could be huge, folks, this nor'easter. And I want you guys to keep in mind that because... Again, this could be a very impactful nor'easter that could bring up to two feet of snow. This could change. We have to see how this low pressure, I keep repeating that in this video, but I want to emphasize that. Do not take this as face value. Um, however, this is what I'm currently expecting. And it seems it seem like, it seems like it's more likely because the computer models are leaning towards a bigger snowstorm in the East Coast. Where exactly that so has yet to be seen, but I think a major snowstorm is a safe bet for the northeast coast headed this Wednesday. Now, outside of this snowstorm that's expected along the northeast, we also need to watch for another small snowstorm that's currently over the Midwest, bringing a little bit of snow to Oklahoma and Colorado and Kansas, as well as northern New Mexico. You see that there's a little bit of snow right here and um, it's expected to extend and bring some snow to Oklahoma City, not a ton, probably around an inch or maybe less than that. But you see the snow extends to Arkansas and then you see that out of nowhere, we could see another snow. We could see a snowstorm before the big nor'easter that the computer malls are expecting where we could see a decent amount of snow, especially um, just northwest of the I-95 corridor if just enough cold air is there. If we take a look at the computer models, um, over the next several days, um, you're gonna see that there's there might be just enough cold air to really for this storm to work with um, in the northeast, bring some snow in the northeast as well, and we could potentially see um, an uh, inch or two of snow from this storm. So I want you guys to keep that in mind that Monday or Monday morning you could see a snow, and if all this in, in worst case scenario, if this clipper system or if this ridge moves a little bit faster to where more cold air gets in it and creates more of unstable air in this area we could see a maybe a much more significant snowstorm at this point the computer models are leaning towards that right now the more likely scenario is mainly a small snowstorm bringing one to three inches however do not rule out that scenario that this ridge moves a little faster, bringing more cold air and its ability to bring a potentially stronger snowstorm. So I want you guys to keep that in mind over the next several days. But outside of that, it should it seems pretty quiet in the United States. Um, definitely watch out for snow around Oklahoma City since you guys aren't used to snow like that. So um, watch out for that. And in the Northeast, definitely definitely at least be aware of this snowstorm. Um, I and if anything, I guess you should prepare now because it's better to be safe than sorry and to be late in the party when getting um when getting items for this snowstorm. So I would say prepare in the northeast wherever you are because you could potentially see a significant snowstorm and it's becoming more likely you will see one. But anyways guys, I thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you like this content. Make sure to like if you like this video. Turn on post notifications if you want to see more and I hope you guys have a good day, good night, good afternoon, whenever you're watching this.